What up, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, aka the Lone Wolf. We're back to you today with another episode of Sake Sundays. And unfortunately, we're not gonna be drinking. I don't know if you're gonna say that. And instead of Sake Highs, we're gonna be trying something new today. Ginjo. Premium Ginjo Sake. I hope I'm saying that right. And I wanna say thank you to God's Favorite Jewels for sponsoring the show. This is for our guest. Ooh. And go ahead and tell the people who you are. Hello, I'm Samaya, and I'm excited to be here today. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, this right here is an artist, and I'm learning more about her already before we even start this episode. Not only does she sing, she's producing. She's been working on a song right now in Logic, and she played every instrument herself. That's dope. That's true. Except for the drums. I don't turn them. Have you tried? Yeah, I think it's something I would love to get into someday, but I don't know. I'm not a drummer no, so far. You. Have you just laid, like, any drums out? I do, yeah. I do lay the drums out. With um, pads, yeah. Yeah. You know, splice samples, cutting them up, and also adding different drum sounds and making random beats. I think it would be much easier making beats if I already knew how to drum, because then no, I'd be yeah. able to hear it in my head better. For sure. So I want to learn someday. Uh, you could practice just with a pencil. Because I, I remember oh. in high school and uh, middle school, we would just tap out beats. And that's how I even learned, like, rhythm low-key. Huh. Outside of, like, clapping and just snapping. Yeah, I do the... Stop. <laughs> I do the basic rhythm. Oh, it took a minute, for real, because it was, like you said, just, like, being able to play what you're hearing. Because I'd be like... But to go from anywhere further than that, it took a while to, like, be able to do it and then be able to hear it or be able to do what I was hearing with the actual pencil. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, this is something pencil we drums. did in middle school. I remember this dude named Brady. Shout out to Brady. He started, like, we would be walking down the hall and he would be beating out beats on the wall on the water fountain and the teachers were just like break stop it and he was just i was like why are you so obsessed with this i wish he was a producer shout out to you brady i hope you produce it somewhere now yeah i hope so sounds like he has like a drummer heart <laughs> you need to go get some of what he had yeah for real i need that although when i listen to songs and stuff i get into it and i start like drumming onto my Legs. <laughs> no, it is. It's not the same. It's practice, though. It's practice. You feel me? It's the basics. It's really it's just getting used to different speeds and patterns. And then once you get something simple, you just add another element to it. It's like, I'm not going to lie. I don't know how to play the drums. I always <laughs> thought it would be dope, and I knew I could because, like, it was just anything after three. And if I had to hit the kick drop, nah, bro. Once I had to move my leg and my hand, it just... <laughs> The coordination. Is yeah, you need killer coordination. Anytime I go into the drum section at Guitar Center, it sounds crazy. It sounds <laughs> like some child has found a drum set and is trying to make something happen that shouldn't exist. How long did they let you play for? They, they let me play a little bit. Yeah, when you you off, you need to go in there. I think once a week. they've given me some looks and been like, <laughs> I don't know what she's doing there. Oh, that's how you get a teacher. You know, we'd be like, all right, That's you true. seem to really want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Find someone who takes pity on my drum skills oh. and wants to teach me. Or just go there and just practice and be like, it's been like 10 minutes. Pull out <laughs> some notes and pull out a laptop. Would it lesson up? Look at a tutorial. You feel me? <laughs> they got tutorials for everything on YouTube. That's true. Oh, uh, everything. What's something that you've learned off of YouTube? I know you learned something. Oh, I've learned so many things off of YouTube. So many things. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like, I know how to crochet. I do a lot of different hobbies just for fun. I have ADHD, so, like, everything really? excites me. Um, so I know how to crochet. I know how to play different instruments. There's other stuff, too. I've, like, I used to look at drawing and painting tutorials all oh, the time. Oh, you draw and paint? I do that, too. Uh, do you make your own cover art? Um, I don't, but I've thought of it before, yeah. so I think I will. I'll probably, like, draw or paint some cover art in the future. 
or just get like how do you usually get your cover art i work with friends and stuff yeah. i like do a photo shoot with different people and sometimes or i use other photos that i have and have someone edit it i usually have like a vision a creative vision yeah. in the last like six months i had this girl who paints like she's a painter yeah and she just listened to some of my songs and just painted what it like brought to her oh my god i love that and i was like yeah i think i want to do this more and like we were talking about earlier it's just like not doing stuff gives room for someone who's already good at it to yeah add to the like artistry of it it's true and so i was like all right i already made the song what if i had another artist make their interpretation of the song and just I add that, that layer to it and it just made me think what are you about to say I got really into film photography like a year or two ago, yeah. and I'm not a photographer, photo like a, I'm not like a professional photographer. I don't really know what a lot of the settings and stuff mean. <laughs> I just have like my point and shoot, yeah. more so automatic yeah. um, camera, but I enjoy playing around with different types of film and different lighting and stuff like that. And so for some of my cover art, I have some film photos that I want to use. I did for one of them. Which song? Um, it's for What If We Flew Away. All right, bet. Go listen to that. What If We Flew Away. Yeah. What's your favorite song that you've made to date? Oh, my God. That is hard. Um, It's hard because they're so different from one another, and I also have so many songs. How many do you have out? The ones that I have out, hmm, it... Wow, I don't know. It could be 11 or 14. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a, you know, not too big of a range. So no. We'll call it 12. I think it might be 14 <laughs> or something like that. Because I have two um, EPs and some singles in the middle and stuff like that. Um, for the EPs, what inspired, like, instead of dropping singles, to drop a project or a body of work? Yeah, so... I released my first body of work as an EP, first ever. I was like 16, mm -hmm. and it's called This Flame. And at that time, like, I was so new to music. I didn't know what the industry was like at all. I just knew that I had music and I wanted it out. I kind of thought that once I released the music, everyone would just automatically listen Play to it. My People would know you had a song. Like, yeah. yeah. And that didn't happen. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's take a shot to sad realizations. Sad realizations. We'll call them sad, but I don't know. Reality check. No, reality check. I was about to say, just reality. It's yeah. not even sad necessarily. Oh. Not bad. Not bad. No sake high. But it's not bad. I kind of like it, though, because with... The non-nigori sakes, the ones, you know, the filtered sakes, usually they're not as sweet. Yeah. A lot of times they can taste like rubbing alcohol. Yeah, like strong. Like really strong. Yeah. Um, But this doesn't really have that. This is pretty no. smooth. If it was iced, or not iced, but chilled, colder, I feel like it wouldn't have even had as much of a taste as it did. Mm. But it's a nice flavor. I like it. Berkeley, California. Go Berkeley. Where are you from? Ohio. Oh. I'm from the Bay Area. Oh, for real? Not Berkeley, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long have you been in LA? For a couple years. All right. You like it better than the Bay, or? Yeah, I'm from San Jose, and the creative, especially creative musical community, is really small, and everyone's right. just doing it as a hobby instead of trying to make it as a career. Yeah. So, this is so much better. I feel that. You feel like there is like more people that are on the same wave as you out here? Absolutely. And, you know, I do a bunch of creative things. Um, sometimes I go through phases where I'm more interested in pursuing acting and stuff. And there's just that a lot so of opportunities big. here. <laughs> and that doesn't even look green. I'm disappointed. I'm sorry to interrupt you like that. Oh, did you did you empty it? No, no. It's just that I, as I'm pouring, I'm like, this is such a big... Oh, yeah. I don't even know how much to pour. Like, I can't gauge. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's eight ounces. I think like, that's a cup. Good. like, that's why I stopped. And then I just looked at it and just started laughing. Like, this big old cup. And I it feel does like, look really funny. 
I feel like I should have added water. Water. Does it even taste like tea? I feel like it tastes like water. It tastes like water. Yeah, I can tell by the look of it. The water wasn't hot enough. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Here, look. Buddha, you know, it was a nice try. I don't know why I didn't just do that to begin. Oh my god. You know, it was put that in the microwave by itself. Once I realized there was no cup for me, I should have just made you a cup of tea. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to use the tea, tea devices that we have. Like, I love tea, so I have a key quality, especially if you're a tea drinker. Absolutely. Like, it still looks bland. <laughs> At least it's hot now. It'll do its thing. It's definitely hot now. I'll just let it steep a little bit. And... Do you have a favorite tea? Do I have a favorite? Oh, I actually do have a favorite tea. It's a really exciting one for me because it's my favorite. <laughs> you got lit up when you said it. Because <laughs> I was going to be like, nah, I don't know. I like so many teas, but no, I do have a favorite. It's called Milky Oolong Tea. Never heard of it. So Oolong Tea, you know, has its oolongy flavor by itself. It's but Oolong. It's just a type of tea. Like, there's green tea, there's so white tea, like there's plant, oolong tea. Like a herb. So, most a place? teas... <laughs> oh, my God. I think how tea works is that most actual tea comes from a tea plant. Oh, for real? Yeah. There's a tea plant. I didn't know that. I know, right? I thought it was you made. So, black tea and green tea come from the same plant. They're just either processed differently or a different part of the plant. I don't, I don't know all the details. So like people. There's white people and there's black people and they're all from the same species. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's milky oolong tea is exciting because when you drink it, it tastes as if it's creamy, as if there's milk in it. But oh, it's completely real. clear. There's no milk in it. It just has It's clear that like flavor. no color? I mean, it, no, it's right. kind of it's like brown. But it has like a, yeah, yeah, like a tea tint. tint. Yeah. Tea tint. Like a what? A tea tint. A tea tint? This tea is tinted? Yeah, oh it does have a tea tint. <laughs> <laughs> I just made it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, am I hearing correct? <laughs> You're like a tint for your tea? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh my gosh. Oh. Um. So it's really good. I recommend... For people to try milky oolong, it's kind of got like a naturally sweet flavor. It's cool. It's as if you actually put milk in it, but you didn't. It Where's it from? Tastes like... I don't know. Can you Amazon? You it? just find yeah. Maybe, <laughs> you just find it online. The like Amazon, they have everything. Every time I went to my cousin's house, they used to make it for me. And at a certain point, they were like, "You know what? Just take it. You like it way more than I do. You I drink it every time you here." <laughs> yeah. Um. But speaking of tea tints, what's exciting? <laughs> Hearing it back is funny as hell. <laughs> Have you ever put glitter, like edible glitter, in your drinks? I've never had edible glitter. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me at the edible glitter. <laughs> but it's exciting when you do. I recommend it. Anytime you're having, like... Any type of get together, if you're having some friends over, it doesn't matter who there are. I think everyone just drop just, some. Yeah, I feel like people in, will look at it like put it in your wine. You put it in. <laughs> it literally looks like that. It looks so cool. It, if you put like gold glitter in, it'll just become swirly and like magical. And does it change the color of the drink at all, or just adds a? Only if you get like a colored edible glitter. What is it made out of? It's like, I think it's edible, like, Mika glitter or something like that. I don't know. I think it's a sediment. <laughs> Maybe for the next part, you know, get some glitter. Oh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I was trying to think of something like a cartoon or something where they had a sparkly drink. Yeah, it's very, like, fairy potion or, like, Harry Potter-esque. Are you fan of Harry Potter? I am, but J.K. Rowling disappoints me. Why? Because she's really transphobic. <laughs> I didn't know that. And it's Trans Visibility Day today. Hey, shout out Trans Disability Day. I had no clue. I didn't know that either. No, not Disability Day. <laughs> 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 
whether I'm going to cut that or not. <laughs> you have time to think about it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my bad. I misheard you. <laughs> I think that was the funniest <laughs> Oh, you said, no, not this. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Take care, Oli. <laughs> I needed that. That was a good laugh. Oh my. Laugh. Mm. Wow. I'm back. Yeah, I never really watched Harry Potter like that. Oh yeah, I used to I I used to love it. I would watch it every holiday time with my dad. We would holiday? rewatch all of the movies. Your Halloween or like near Christmas holidays Christmas? and stuff. Yeah. Why Harry Potter on Christmas? I guess you had a lot of time it off every kind of day. That and yeah. then it kind of became like a tradition and also in some of the movies in a lot of movies, there's winter time, and they're going on the holidays too. Yeah. And so it just felt appropriate. It just felt appropriate to drink some hot chocolate and watch Harry Potter. Yeah, my mom was like, "No, you can't watch that." Like, mm. What? Yeah. Why? What was her reasoning? Magic. Oh, uh, yeah. She didn't like anything with magic in it. Oh man, was she? Re- is she religious? Oh, I grew up super, super Christian. Super Christian. Yeah, yeah. Are you still? Uh, I still would say, by most people's, like, categorization, I'm a Christian, so I still, like, believe a lot of things, Mm -hmm. but also, Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian. Buddha wasn't a Buddhist. Yeah, So, if you truly are trying to follow or be like what the teachings of them were and not the construct of the religion is... Mm. Then, you feel me? So it's like, on the easy mm-hmm. answer, I'll just be like, I heavily follow and believe in the Christian ideals. When I say I'm a Christian, I don't know. Because mm-hmm. Jesus wasn't even a Christian, bro. So I don't... I would be like, Jesus, I don't want to be a Christian. <laughs> so. so you take what you like from the religion, and then... I wouldn't even necessarily say what I like. Because there's a lot of shit I don't like either that still applies. So, you feel me? It's like, if I truly wanted to do and believe what Jesus was saying, there's things about what my self, Charles Wright, wants to do or thinks is the right way that, you feel me? So, it's like, no, even the things I don't like, I apply. Mm. But it's like certain constructs. It's like, do I have to go to church every Sunday? I The things that feel right to you. Not even necessarily right to me. The things that <laughs> make sense and that he actually said. You know okay. what I mean? It's like nobody said that you have to belong to a certain church. Denominations weren't a thing. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, what is a Baptist Christian versus a non a non denominational Christian? It's like that jargon is what I did don't mm. feed into. You feel That's me? Fair. If we want to take a scripture and literally compare what this means in today's phonetics in English to what it meant in the Hebrew text originally. And then compare the law of the land in that day to this day and figure out what this is saying. We can talk. But if you're just telling me that I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't do that because you read it in the Bible and your grandma told you. I love your grandma. And I love your strong holding on to your belief and ideals. Your character is strong. That doesn't mean you can't be wrong or dumb. That's accurate. Also, do you have a tissue box? Right there. And so it's like, I like to be accurate. You know? What I mean? Yeah, one sec. <laughs> That's more of what it is. I don't really know how to say. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't talk because I'm definitely going to cut that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so you like to be accurate. Wait. You could just repeat what you were saying. So, yeah, I guess accurate would be what I'd like to say. I like to be accurate with the words and how and what I say. Because if I said I'm a Christian, certain people would be like, oh, you drinking sake? Mm. They're like, all right, people drink wine every day. Jesus drank wine. Didn't say don't drink. He said don't be drunk. But at the same time, people who are set aside, prophets and kings, were not meant to have hard liquor. Who's to say who's a prophet and the king in today's society? And how do you know Ooh. what lineage you actually fell under and what laws belong to you? We don't talk about that That's when you true. go to church. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people end up kind of like what you said, 
they end up believing what they're told to believe and they kind of take pick and choose the parts that they feel are, are accurate to them because of what they were taught, but not necessarily what's actually written. And it's just kind of their own version. And then they're like, you have to follow this, which I don't really fuck with. Part of it just comes to constructing a safe space for yourself. Yeah. And if something is challenging that safe space, it's either I have to reshape my space or I get you out of it. And it's easier to get somebody out of your space sometimes than it is to reshape it. And that's another reason why I approach the topic in the conversation, like, the way I do. Because it's like, hold up, hold up, hold up, bro. And so I feel like regardless of whether it's religion, politics, or even, uh, like, a sports team sometimes, it's like people don't hear the logic in what you're saying because it's clouded through the emotional lens. Absolutely. And it's not even always on purpose. It's like I said, you create a safe space for yourself. Yeah. And so sometimes you don't even realize what you're excluding by making that space True. or what you're allowing or inhibiting by keeping that space the way it is. It'd be a whole new world out there. <laughs> Seriously. Sorry. And you stuck in this box because half of it made you feel safe, but the other half of it came with it. So instead of just having this half and, you know, wandering out, half you don't like, half you do like, and you're caged in that bitch. And that's why I was like, I don't know, I'm trying to be open-minded. Oh. That's good. Mm. Yeah. What about you? Are you religious? I wouldn't say I'm religious, but <laughs> I'm more so spiritual in my own ways. Like, I have my own beliefs. Um, yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like my views are kind of controversial. But then again, I think everyone's views are kind of controversial in their own When you want to talk about religious beliefs, it becomes controversial when someone starts saying you're wrong or this is the right. You feel me? You can't exactly. have wrong, right, and no controversy. You feel me? Absolutely. Um, that's why I also don't I try and speak with grace for all space. Yeah. You feel me? I feel like, like in what I believe... Which is just kind of what I came up with. And I'm pretty sure other people believe that type of thing, too. But I just think that there's some truth in most people's religions or spiritual beliefs. Because I more so believe in the energy and that connection with the universe and stuff. And so, like, if you're praying constantly and you have a certain type of something you're wishing for and you're praying every day for that like it kind of falls into trying to manifest that thing you know to a certain extent is even you're telling like the you universe that's it, what you want but believing something and saying it is also just a certain level of connectivity that goes into oh, either absolutely. one you feel me there's people be like i prayed to god for so long for x y and z to happen and it never happened oh yeah no. <laughs> i mean i feel like to manifest anything at least personally like for me if i want something i have to journal about it yeah I have to be like why is it not here yet why am i blocking myself from it do you journal a lot i try to i feel like when i journal i have better life quality and clarity i feel like you get the thought yeah out of your head and it just leaves more yeah. room for you feel me be if i'm really confused about something i'll start journaling about it and then by the end of it, I'll usually have some type of solution or at least more peace with the situation. Right. There's a little, like, clarity of mind. Even if you didn't pick, you realize, like, wait. Yeah. I'm making a decision. I'm making a decision. I'm still, you know me as a post about, all right, which one, which one, which one, which one? Yeah. Or, like, sometimes I'll just be thinking about something that's bothering so me. and Yeah, over and over again. But then when I write it down, I'm like, oh. I just have to think about it a little bit differently and everything's okay. Or you ever, sometimes I'll start writing and it's like, sometimes I'll journal from a different, not even necessarily lens, but I, lens or perspective. Like sometimes I'll journal literally what I'm thinking or mm. what I'm feeling. Yeah. Other times I'll journal like from a higher view on like, all right, in the situation or in life situation, sometimes, you know, you might be thinking, I'm just going right. And then all of a sudden, something bad happens where it's like that inner voice thinking, but yeah. written down. Interesting. It was other times, it's like if I were to pray, 
I'll just write my prayer. Yeah, I do stuff like that. And so it's like different types of writing just have made me feel different types of like, all right, bet. I don't have to think about that anymore. And other times, like you said, at the end of it, I realized, yo, I guess I already knew more than I did. It's just that it's a cycle in my head. Yeah. And so it's just like giving you the space to actually lay everything on the table, analyze it, and then come back to it. And totally. And sometimes I'll be worried about things that when I write them down, I'll realize, eh, that's not even true. Or that's not even that big of a deal. I was just, like, having a rough day and it yeah. was just worse in my head. But it's actually not that big of a deal and I'm chill. I think the funniest is when you have something like that, but you don't even realize it until you come back and you read it. And you're like, oh my god. <laughs> Why was I even tripping, bro? <laughs> like... Yeah. And also therapy helps and stuff when I'm not going through good things. And and especially if you, like, want to be in a different... If you want to be living, like, a different everyday life. Or if you want something specific and you don't know how to get there. I feel like there's a lot of blockages we have as people. Sometimes we don't believe we can do something. Yeah. Sometimes we don't think we're worthy of doing things. And then, but we can, and we are worthy. No. And if you actually write that down and make yourself answer it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like a lot of the times we just don't ask ourselves the questions and give them um, the right answers or the mm -hmm. real answers. Yeah. Sometimes we, we and we ignore it. Yeah. Because it's hard to think about. Right. It's the hard questions that get ignored. Yeah. Or you get busy yeah. with other stuff. And that's why it's so you much running through your head. It. Yeah. Or if you actually sit down and you put it on paper and you say, I'm going to write. And then you look at it and you're like, all right, so now I have to think about this. <laughs> Some critical thinking is about to happen. Yeah. Um, I think it just, it just makes you slow down. It makes you slow down. There's, there's so much that happens in life outside of what we're feeling and thinking that we just have to remember all right i have to be here at this time these are the directions to oh get my god there. yeah like they asked me to bring them this alongside everything that you're feeling there's so many things to constantly think about yeah one thing what are you about to say oh just that you know when we're doing so many things and thinking about so many things in life what i've noticed is that sometimes i'll just be like more easily stressed or yeah. more easily anxious and then when i take that time out in a day like even if it's like five ten minutes yeah. to just journal or like do a light meditation or something just trying to be more present in the moment i feel so much better it just brings you back to there it does yeah and outside of your head and uh going along with just the thinking about so much in a day we see so much more one thing i think about is yeah. just like time differences and how we have billboards everywhere and that's like, true with our phones, you have ads, pop-ups, oh, yeah. everywhere. So much distraction. Outside so much of stimulation. what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, even though you're not, like, I'm not reading this label every time I no. it catches it. But just now, I just saw three words indistinctly. Yeah. And my mind registered all of that. You feel me? Yeah. And so it's like, just the amount of content we register on a regular basis is easily a hundred times that of like our great grandparents mm. they didn't have tvs that's so true they didn't, <laughs> they didn't have billboards have... everywhere no. they had books oh and newspapers God. letters like they yeah. had more clarity of thought mm -hmm. which big brain thought just thinking about that i guess you no know, we still have big breakthroughs and levels of breakthroughs and stuff but people just thought more you feel me so it was like they had to memorize more information yeah the way they thought was different they had less room to just be like, man, they were more, probably more decisive. And I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. And honestly, like when I was younger and my parents would drive me around, they had all the directions memorized unless it was somewhere super new where they had it written right. out. But I'm I don't have a lot of that, directions so. memorized. No, no I'm always using any. that. I've been driving from where I live to my job, which is eight miles for over six months. I couldn't get there without my GPS. I don't say I couldn't, but I'm definitely going to be a little a stressed. Little, a little like, stressed. The whole, for the first like eight minutes, 10 minutes, yeah. I'm like, is this, I get on here 
I don't know my exit. No, yeah. <laughs> That's real, though. That's like kind of how I feel too. We're not really paying as much attention. We don't because we don't have to memorize it. Or like back in the day, you had to had to memorize everyone's phone numbers. No, yeah. But at the same time, with that, it gives you room for other stuff. Yeah. I, mean, I forget who it was. Uh, That's true. It was was it like Albert Einstein or Edison, somebody like of their status, you know, mm-hmm. renowned thinker, creator. <laughs> and he told somebody, he was like, Why do I need to worry about what's in that almanac? Mm-hmm. I can pay any person in the world who's literate to get that answer for me. That's true. I'm not going to worry about shoving my brain full of that stuff when I could be sitting here thinking critically and evolving stuff that's in that book. I'm not going to memorize it. That's also so real. I was like, that's crazy. Crazy way to think. I wonder what he would have been doing today. (laughs) He would just be sitting there thinking about something. Like, yeah, let me get on my phone. And then next thing you know, something new is being made. Like, oh, but he had that. What would they be doing today? Oh, if Edison and Albert Einstein were around now, yo, that would be crazy. They they definitely have like time machines. Like a spaceship? Oh. Mm, Spaceship, we have. Elon made spaceships. I know. They'd be making quantum machines that you make. They'd be having food just pop up here. Like. Okay, you know what I need? Hmm. I need teleportation devices to exist. They'd have those. You just jump in. <laughs> Fall out on the other side. Catch no it. No more LA traffic. Oh, fair. That would be dope. If that was if you had a superpower, is that what it would be? Teleportation? Yeah, I'm also late everywhere, and so this would make it easier. You're on time here. Nah, no, I wasn't. Yeah. I live really close, though. Oh, grace period. <laughs> uh, if I had a superpower, I don't know. I don't think teleportation. I would want to. I don't know. I'd have to think about yeah. it. Yeah. I also love to travel. And so that, that would make would it easier. So much. Yeah. I guess teleportation would be hella nice. Yeah. Do you think it'd be able to do pretty if you had super speed, same. If you had sonic hearing, same. You just be there. You just listen. If they think they saw you, boom, you gone. Mm-hmm. Like if you wanted to rob a bank or something, boom. Like Oh my god. Actually, teleportation is actually pretty nice. Yeah, and you, 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 like, do a lot with that. you could have brunch in Paris. And still be home. And you could like take do like spend an afternoon in I don't know. Yo, you Seoul, could experience like, so much stuff. Like, in just one day. You go to concerts for free. <laughs> that would, I guess. Yeah, that would be lit. You'd be at yeah. I would just be That's looking true. at magazines and stuff. Like, They'd be I like, how this person get in here? It's like, security breach! Oh, fuck. <laughs> and the, the security <laughs> camera is just like, oh my god, I swear there's a person. They just disappeared. Yeah. And everyone will be like, bro, you're insane. <laughs> you know, that just got me digging. You know, you see like clips of people like posting stuff on the internet saying stuff just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. What if there is somebody... That does have like UFOs and aliens. It's like a teleportation device or something. Mm-hmm. And it, it's used in real time here, and they just try and keep it a secret. <laughs> As there's one thing they do say that like the technology that we have is like not even I think it's like seventy percent, sixty percent of actually how advanced we are. I've heard stuff like that. Other stuff is military high grade intelligence. So it's like they don't want normal people to be operating on the same level as them. So. Even our phones can't do, like, stuff that military-grade phones can do. Our computers are limited. Even cars. They say, like, even if you try to take, like, a Mercedes all the way to whatever the highest limit is on it, Mm. it'll go, like, 40, 60 miles under what is is actually on the speedometer. Oh, my God. Yeah. Huh. Like, a lot of stuff is just, like, child-locked low-key. Yeah. They don't want us going crazy or having too many capabilities. You've been into conspiracies and stuff like that? I find them entertaining. I don't necessarily believe most of them. I probably believe a couple. I don't know off the top of my head. But I know people who are, like, really into conspiracies. And I'm like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) I just never want to be looked at that way. 
But there's a couple of them that I've just been like, I don't know, bro. I can't refute it. I'm not yeah, going to jump on. Yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> it, could, it could be real. Like, there's too much too much evidence heavily weighing in favor of. Yeah, I'm like... That's wild. I don't not believe it. Right. You feel me? That's where I am. Yeah. I'm just waiting. Like, I'm waiting for so much stuff. Like I'm waiting to find out mm-hmm. that Biden is like an alien or something. <laughs> it's like... My God. The whole U.S. presidency is a scam. They are all related. Have you seen stuff like that where it's like shows that every single U.S. president has had some familiar family tie to each other? Really? Yeah. Even Obama? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, right? That's where I'm like, interesting. Who the fuck? Who got these DNA tests, bro? Where'd you get these lineage like, results? Yeah, like, so bizarre. You feel me? Oh. Yeah, and even like the whole conspiracy for like where Obama came from, you know, he went to high school with uh, George W. Bush. Mm. It was the same private school. And apparently his stepdad owns like the fifth biggest oil company in the world. That's the thing. I feel like whether the alien part is a thing or not, I feel like like the most... Like the richest people are really are on really to some connected. Yeah. And we just don't know like, like the big scheme. Secret. Yeah, because mm-hmm. why would we? You're not gonna help. Yeah. <laughs> you don't play a part. Just play your part. No, and I don't know if we would even like what they're cooking up, and they know that too. No, exactly. <laughs> so it's better for people to keep things a secret for them. I don't, I don't know. know. I will say this. So on my way here. I was just, you know, scrolling. I was sitting to admit that. I was scrolling while driving. But I saw stuff about Prince William, Prince Edward. Oh, yeah. I saw stuff about Diddy. And then I saw something else, like, same air of negativity around it. Same level of, like, you know what I mean? He's a prince, bro. This is Great Britain. Great Britain. They call it great because of the extent of their history. You feel me? Diddy has been my, um, what you call it? My, uh, whatever. I can't think of what I'm trying to say. I don't know what you're doing. Anyways, <laughs> someone who's 82 years old asked me, did you see Sean Combs? It's P. Diddy. Oh. You feel me? The Sean Combs, his, his government name. Oh. Right. She's 82. She's seen him since she was 30. You feel me? 40. Like, Diddy has been in the industry for 20, 30 years. Oh, wow. So, like, the level of ranking he has, he's gone to dinner with presidents. You feel me? He's been to parties with presidents. Like, oh. yes, political campaigns incorporate, like, record labels all the time. You don't remember Jay-Z and Beyonce did a free concert for Obama. Oh, yeah. They support parties. You feel yeah. me? So, in order to get you, they mingle in. It's Epstein true. Island. How many people was on that flight list? You feel me? And so I just so said many. all of this to say the air of negativity that is being broadcast on all of these like one five percenters is really interesting to see it all happening at one time. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's like the landscape of the world is not prepared. No, but I think I don't know. That's the thing about the internet era though. <laughs> We can know a lot. Yeah. And, and like it's harder that. to hide things from people. Yeah. Like I would assume back before the video cameras existed, robberies were probably much easier oh, to like sure. do and just so many things. A lot of stuff. Even just after that, phones. Yeah. Made it way harder to at least not have evidence. Uh-huh. Oh. You can but, track them. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I just think, what's about to happen, bro? It makes me feel like the world is gearing up for something big. Mm-mm. Hopefully it's for the better. Hopefully. Oh, how about them cowboys? Oh, do you like sports? No. <laughs> that was an answer in itself. <laughs> Not that much, but then again, I did grow up like watching hockey with my dad. And we always went to games, and we still do here and there. So I do enjoy that. But right. otherwise, I'm not that much into sports. 
No, I couldn't see you at a hockey game. Yeah! Just watching somebody get body slammed. Yeah, I'm, I'm into the <laughs> hockey games. It's funny. Oh. Um, but yeah, not otherwise. How about you? Are you into sports? I used to be. Yeah. I just, my attention is always on something else. That's the thing. Like, I'll watch something and I'll be like, okay, yeah, this person's doing this. Okay, cool. And then I'll be like thinking about 10 other things. Yeah. Or it's just, like, the amount of time it takes to watch, like, a whole game. Yeah, that's also the thing. I know that if I got too into it, I wouldn't do anything else. And it's get too into a it. little too controversial. This is controversial. It's a little too stupid to be spending, like, all of my free time on sports. And no, <laughs> I feel like I hate the fact that this is part of why. But I had a lot of people that were all about it. I'm talking memorize stats oh, yeah. from players and games mm-hmm. but are failing classes and tests yeah i was like i don't want to be like y'all bro like you feel me like it turned me off to sports that i even love to watch just because of the air of you know i was like nah bro I, i'm gonna go also some people this. are so competitive about it that they are like gonna start fights with them yeah. over their favorite team and that's what and i'm like bro this is like, a, bro, why are you... it's not that serious yeah i'm like <laughs> what is he doing for you that's what got me i was like actually no, this not. is big controversial i was like bro <laughs> do you like him like <laughs> you know how tall he is how old he is where he was born how fast he is also, this is obsessive the amount of Men who love to enjoy other men being all sweaty and like, on top is, of each other. This... <laughs> you didn't even go to class yesterday and you failing. Your girlfriend is breaking up with you. But you was about to go watch this man perform who's making more money. Like I, The idolization of these grown men who have whole other lives and worlds outside of even this sport. And I've seen people like they're going to the game. They sacrificing this money. They're not doing this for the it just turned me off to sports low key. Yeah, I get it. Sadly. I still watch the Super Bowl. You feel me? I still watch finals and stuff. But it's like you said, to like get into it enough where I'm like doing this three days out the week, it just makes me feel like I'm not being my best me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's real. Oh. Um, but at the, also, this is something, none, no disrespect to athletes or at, like sport enthusiasts. Oh, yeah, no. If you like it, you like it. But if you're passionate about something, you're passionate about something. Passion is passion. I'm passionate about, like, 10,000 things. You feel me? I don't need it to be sports. And, like, watching people dunk and stuff and, like, knowing when it comes down to, like, when I played football, there's a whole understanding of the game and knowing, like, mm. just like chess. You feel me? Oh, I love Once it. Once you get to the line, you have a 3-4 or a 4-3. The QB is reading what's happening before anybody's even moving. So, like, having that understanding of something, mm-hmm. I respect it. I just got a chess tattoo yesterday. Oh, like what? A board like a chess player? piece. With what? The queen. The queen? Are you the queen? Because the queen's fast. Yeah. I feel it. Did it hurt? Where anything. at? Anything. Yeah, it did hurt. It's over here. Right there? I got a tie right here. Yeah. Kanye Bear. Nice. Uh, this is my first one. Is that your first tie? Oh, no. I think it was my 10th. All right, 10? Yeah. That's a lot, low key. Yeah. Uh, Most of them are smaller, though, so. I feel it. None of mine are that big, except for one. And I was like, I'm never getting my lips done again. Yeah. Fuck that. Oh, damn. Uh, uh, this is the last thing about the sports stuff. It's like with athletes and everything, you think about the Roman Empire, for real, and how they had like the gladiators. They would do stuff like that in order to calm the people. You feel me? Or to appease the masses. Political strife is happening. Let's have a tournament. You feel me? So it's like... Yeah, gives people something to focus on. Instead of other things the important stuff, you feel yeah. me? So it's like, that's another that even reason happens why. even the news and other No, things. exactly. The news has just gotten blown out of proportion. Why do we have 24-hour news? Yeah. What's especially, happening 24 hours a day? Especially random news about celebrities' you lives. You feel me? Or it's like, I'm like just to end, that important. the Walmart and x rise Super Spring is at an influx. But we don't give a damn about these dogs. Like, no disrespect to the dogs. But it's like, you put highlights and breaking news and there's Everything's a class I had. breaking news. It was super interesting because it was a Mexican, um, he wasn't a teacher. He was a teacher's aide. So he was a grad mm-hmm. student, but he led a class. 
And his whole goal for us at the end of it was just to look at media differently. And the way he did this, instead of pointing out stuff he wanted us to realize, I feel like a lot of people didn't pick up what he was giving us because they just were doing the assignments. But our first assignment was to look at how many companies there were that even distributed the news. Mm -hmm. And then from there, he broke down how the news went from written letters to newspapers to radio to TV. Mm -hmm. And just how all of that went from having a post so many miles apart where so many people were writers and they wrote about certain stories and they all took one to three days to actually get out to people. And then it went to newspapers and then they went to Morse code, which gave electrical wires and lines. People started buying the wires and the lines. So they were monopolizing who could actually send news and what stories were getting across all the way to radio, which had news stations. And then stations started buying up the wires and the lines. So only their programming would be getting out. So only those stories would get out all the way to having news outlets, TV outlets today, where there's only so many record labels and there are only so many media companies, period. Newspapers, magazines, radio, TV, movies. There's not even seven companies that control all media. Yeah. Shit's wild. It's crazy. And it's true. A very small percentage of people get to choose what we all see and hear. And what we believe. Yeah. What is the reality of the world is based upon those seven companies, those five companies, who all have yeah. heads. Ooh, it's true. It's true. And this is why people fall back onto their religion and they just hope that the things that their grandparents told them are true. Yeah, because... It's comforting. At the end of the day, like, we don't have that much control over the world. Anything. Like, we have control over our own autonomy to a certain extent. To a certain extent. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel like knowing that, though, is kind of what the point of Buddha's whole life was. At least... The Buddha, you know, another thing is, we say Buddha and Buddhism. Yesterday, somebody was like, is Buddha's name even Buddha? No. <laughs> he is one of the Buddhas. That's so true. There are multiple. <laughs> do you feel me? I forget that. I do Often, too. Because that's how everyone says it. And they just say Buddha. Yeah. It's like Buddha is not a, just like the devil. The devil isn't a person. Like people say the devil to mean Satan. But even the word Satan isn't one, it's not a name. Satan is a, like a phrase like Sultan. You feel me? It's a title. Yeah. The devil, you could be a devil. You feel me? The devil in the red dress, the devil in a hat. Devil is a character that we have created to be yeah. an evil person. Oh, this is another reason why just everything has so much layers to it. That's why I just have a it's breath true. of air for really? everything. Like, I'm not going to take anything too personal I think or people close to also heart. like thinking that the devil or something evil is something other than them. It's something that's other. It puts it outside of you. Yeah. So it can't be you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the devil, like I said, it's a title. We all can play devils. Totally. In our own lives and other people's stories. Absolutely. But it's that awareness you feel me? I feel you. Or you actually be like, oh, maybe it is me. <laughs> like, but not everybody does that. You feel me? At it's least like, partially. People like to think like, oh, I'm exempt from being bad or having any crappiness in me. Your emotions justify These you. other people are evil. They did it to me. Or they brought that out of me. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have done that if you didn't do this. Oof. Which is reflecting. And deflecting, as opposed to bringing the devil Projecting. here and yeah. saying, "Oh, maybe uh, you feel me." And again, sometimes it's important to acknowledge your shadow side. No, uh, because sometimes you think you didn't, you, you like, but that's not, and then you realize, "Oh, you feel me?" That's where growth is done when you come to realizations, especially when it wasn't intentional. That's when you realize, like, okay, bad. Yeah. Like you said, shadow side. I really do have more stuff to work on because that wasn't yeah. even my intent in doing that. When you work on that stuff, that's when, like, that's when things actually happen. And I feel like people feel it. Yeah. Like, there's a different energy to you. Absolutely. Because you, I guess it's kind of like having a tea tent. <laughs> when you start getting rid of the tea and the water comes back. <laughs> it was the opposite, where it's like you're steeping in all of the shadow work 
So you still have that tint to the water. Or once you get all of that out, it's just clear water. Yeah. It just flows. Yeah. Wrap around. Yeah. <laughs> I brought that full circle to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> my god oh we have not taken another shot uh yes my mom watches these and she'll be glad it's okay like that and my aunt probably like two weeks ago was like water this sunday we were drinking water replace the sake with water oh like, bro chill like because i have the little cans and i was like bro one can is a person and it's not even 15 yeah. percent. it's like a glass of wine yeah we drink two cans on most of the episodes. <laughs> Chill. Like. That's true. That's... All right. I feel like we need to bring the conversation back up. This is real shit. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. And for people who aren't deep. <laughs> too bad for you. Oof. Oh, do you feel like people think that you're like intricate or like people say a deep person? I just feel like it's real. Like, yeah, not I tend to conversation. be. I tend to prefer like deeper conversations, but you know. You're not going to have a deep conversation with everyone. No. No. You just have to have, like, the right vibe. And there's also people who just don't prefer having those types of conversations. Yeah, at all. At all. And kind of prefer to keep it more surface level or more shallow. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Does that ever doesn't... surprise you? I wouldn't say it surprises me, but it doesn't really tickle my fancy. It... Right. It doesn't really stimulate my brain enough. Oh, it at all. It gets me bored. So. A lot. I'd rather have a lot of things to think about and to actually mull over and stuff, you know? <laughs> and to just keep talking for no reason. Yeah, I'm like, well. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. And it always, like, confused me when it's someone who loves, like, banter and jargon and talking. But as soon as the conversation is actually either serious or productive, they're like, all right, like. And like, bro, we was just talking for the last two hours about nonsense i know we can't have a conversation that actually leads to and there's like i guess it's just the level of emotional depth people are willing to jump into i feel like when you're not at that level of emotional depth with yourself and that's after i said it that's what i was thinking i was like i think it's more so security in your own self yeah that's when it's more difficult for people to engage in it with other people. Because they feel it like you're really uncomfortable. Yeah. They get conscious or self-conscious of what they either do believe or what they think they should or would say. It kind yeah. of brings up what they don't like to think about anyway. Right. And I feel like when it comes to certain topics, it's just like when you think about religion, regardless of if you're religious, I know people who aren't religious at all, but don't want to talk about it just because the like, types of conversations that have ensued after just even that sentence has been said. Oh, yeah. And so it's like, ah, we're not even going to go there. <laughs> or like politics, where it's like, ah, too many arguments start because of the politics, so we never talk about right. it. Right, but it's important to talk about. And sometimes it's not even to get the other person's, like, I'm not building a case on you. Yeah. But you might say something that enlightens me. It made That's me true. think about my own beliefs differently. Yeah. It's like, so. I like to ask... Like, bef when someone says something that I might not agree with or not, I don't, yeah, that I might not agree with. Or you're not even familiar with that ideology or belief. Right. But if I already have some preconceived notion about something that's negative more so, I'll still just ask questions about it. Because yeah. not everyone is going to believe the exact same thing. Yeah. And I could always be wrong about it. That part. What I have assumed and stuff. Knowing you so. could be wrong. Absolutely. I feel like I'm learning that not a lot of people like walk around with that mindset that they could be wrong. It's like if they are wrong, they'll accept it, but they're not going to step into something saying, all right, I might be wrong with this or I might be wrong today. It's like they automatically just step into it. It's like I'm justified in everything I do and say until they're not. I know people like that. And I was like, damn, bro. And I feel like you have to have a balance. Because have you ever met someone who apologized all the time and it made you uncomfortable? Yes. It used to, I felt bad today. I saw like a little short that was speaking about like conditioning. And if you meet somebody who does this and if you meet somebody who does that and they were talking about people who apologize a lot, I was like, I really hope I hurt people's feelings. Because it's like, I was trying to tell them to stop. Yeah. Because you're giving away your power. I just yeah. didn't know how to say that as an 18 year old. Who was just like, bro, stop saying sorry. Like, stop saying, you stop about, stop. are you, 
sorry for being because the people just apologize exactly. for being there and i would say it in a smart ass way it has to do with you know self-worth and how you view yourself yeah. and also a lot of times when people have grown up to be people pleasers yeah and especially if they've been treated poorly by other for having opinions or saying something yeah, yeah in the childhood days or being just like negatively responded to yeah and you weren't even doing anything exactly <laughs> like you feel like you no, have I to feel it. i think i used to apologize more like when i was younger and yeah. i was like i need to stop doing that like what am i sorry for what am i sorry for for being here yeah for like, touching that i don't do it as much as i've heard other people do it i don't yeah. think it was as big of a problem for me but here and there i'll sometimes catch myself saying sorry when it's the other person's fault and yeah. I'm like, like i think one time someone kind of shoved me and i was like oh sorry and i was like bro and i was thinking in my head i was like why did i say sorry no, they should have said sorry there's times you're about to be like my bad but as i've gotten older i just be like what just happened <laughs> what just happened uh and actually somebody said it to me too it what brought it to my attention and i was in like fourth grade though mm. and it was yeah. a girl she was like why are you always saying i'm sorry all the time like stop saying that and i was like huh what like and she was like stop saying i'm sorry if you want to apologize for something on accident just be like my bad or i ain't mean to but don't say i'm sorry and i was just like and then there's the extreme opposite where people like never people apologize. never say sorry even when they definitely need to i had somebody apologize to me like a little context we had spent over three four months without speaking and leading up to that, there were at least three things that happened that were called out and disagreed on. Mm. You feel me? After not speaking, mm -hmm. there was one other thing that happened that was completely out of pocket. During this conversation, an apology started. And I was like, oh, I low-key started speaking as soon as I heard the words, I'm sorry. And then it was a, oh, I'm sorry for one of 15 things that ensued. That's what they said. Yeah. Once I was like, oh, and started to, like, I don't know about the apology. I guess I accept the apology for, and I'm like, oh, I was just only apologizing for, because that was wrong. But, you know, everything else, um, like, they weren't saying my bad or I'm sorry, but you feel me? I was like, yeah, oh, all right. Bad. Really hard to make accountability for your actions. I wasn't saying I was sorry for the other shit, because I don't think I'm wrong. Okay. Even though we can agree it was bad and you didn't like it. Literally, this and that and this and that. Oh, yeah, well, no, all right. And I'm like... <laughs> no, the sorry was for one of ten things you just pointed out. Yeah. Because those are true. And no, I shouldn't have done them. Yeah. <laughs> From the depth of emotion you're willing to dive into. <laughs> they definitely need to be apologizing for things. And then they don't... Or... I don't know if you've met people who apologize for, like, little things, but never for things that matter. Yeah. Or they apologize after something, like, big happens, but the thing that they apologize for isn't the actual core problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, so you're not sorry about this, but you're only a little bit sorry about the other thing that doesn't even matter that And that's much? when you just be like... Okay. That's when you learn to categorize relationships. Yeah. People who are real ones and not... It's, or it's not even it's that. It's like, this is not a safe space for me. <laughs> like, I feel like the safe space people are like the ones who are real. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, you real and fake, but it's like, not even just real and fake. It's like, nah. This just isn't a space that I could even function in. No, even if you're true. fake, you feel me? I can categorize you as fake, but it's also not safe for me here, bro. Because there's some people who are like oh, yeah, on no. a level of fake where it's like, all right. Oof. You act really nice, but I know you're a dick. I know. But we all know that you know that you're really a dick. So you're fake, but, you know, we can work. Yep. You feel me? And then there's people who's just like, I'd just rather not even associate. Yeah, there's people who will, like, act like they're nice, but then they're, like, really fake. And then those are the people you kind of got to watch out for. Exactly. And that's why I'm saying this isn't even a safe space. Like, I'm going to just exit left. Yeah. Yeah. Those are rough. But it takes, like, learning 
just the way people receive and interact and apologize or not. Like, yeah. oh, okay, bet. I see the way that you like approach a situation when you're in the wrong, which mm-hmm. means that you don't have the capacity to be apologetic, which means you're not a full empathetic person. Yeah. Which means I don't know yeah. what's going to ensue if we ever aren't on the same wave or page. It's not safe for it me. It makes sense. <laughs> okay. right. Yeah. And then another thing about apologizing is that I feel like there's a lot of people who will say sorry, but they don't actually mean it. They apologize because it seems socially like, like just they have or acceptable. To, but then if they won't change anything, they'll do the same thing again. Or some people apologize because you called them out. Mm-hmm. Not that I feel bad, but the fact that you realized it was wrong. And if I don't say totally. anything, this relationship, the face of the relationship is different. Yeah. And I'll do it again. I'll just be a little more discreet. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you won't call it out this time. Yeah. But no, it is, again, it's just level of emotional depth you're willing to dive into. Absolutely. And it's ego. Um, oh, yeah. And some people just one. believe that they're not wrong. Mm-hmm. And I don't really know how. I mean, I th- also think some people think theirs are the only feelings that matter and theirs are the only lives that matter. I think that's what it is. Once you start getting in your feelings and emotions, you forget about outside of that. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you know that it's not right, emotionally justified. Yeah. Also, if you're like, if you start thinking about how, oh, my actions could have hurt someone else's feelings, sometimes it makes people feel really guilty and they can't face that guilt. No. Because then they would have to look at all of their past. Their actions. Actions. And see that the devil is actually a lot closer. We say yeah. the devil and put it outside of us, but there's two sides to that. You feel I me? Mean? There's a good and a bad. And we both, or we possess both of them as being human. You have to decide which one of the two you're going to walk on today. Like, yeah. And it's not a one-time thing. You feel me? It's a constant. No, yeah. You have to keep choosing which side you're going to be on. And it's never going to be perfect. It has to be like a conscious choice. Because we have emotions day. and feelings. Yeah. We're human. It's like, what I, like you said, you pick what you like from it. Uh, you were asking. It was like, not even necessarily. Because if I did that, I'd be hella fake, bro. You feel me? <laughs> That's <laughs> fair. I, I'm duality. You feel me? It's, there's good and bad. I have to choose to be good. And yeah. sometimes when I'm being good, I could come off as bad to other people. It's, it's being true. aware of what is being perceived and what is actually happening and what's the intention. Yeah. But that's real. It's, I guess that's three different layers to it. It's emotional debt. How deep are you willing to dive? Is it just your feelings? Is it the other person's feelings? You feel me? And that's one thing I learned as I got older. If you ever tell somebody to put themselves in somebody's shoes who just couldn't, I would be like, bro, what? Like, it was a two people conversation. It was like, bro, I'm. You're not you. You don't even know that that is a possible action to take. What would you do? I would go get the knowledge that I did need in order to make a di- nigga. You don't know there's another decision. You don't know there's other knowledge. How do you know you would go get the knowledge? <laughs> All right. I literally headache like all right back so we're just gonna say you're not able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes right fair is that fair to say <laughs> or dealing with like super judgmental girls or women when something happens and you're like oh i can't believe a woman ever do that or that you're like she had no other she was like i wouldn't eat I'm, i wouldn't do it no there's so many other things you could do yeah i have yeah I'm i've met a lot of people who are like that's a stupid decision to make and you know sometimes we can all be like that no, but then yeah. when you actually think Put about it somebody else's shoes when you're taking a second when you're being serious about it like it's like okay yeah like we can always make stupid decisions yeah. too Some people can never put themselves in someone else's shoes it's just really unfortunate Sorry, takes weird. away the humanity also that's why I feel, it's so weird yeah it's I, weird do you can you think <laughs> it makes me think about dude saying he never heard it before so he could never hear it unless he heard it <laughs> it was like I never did that before so I'll never know how I act until I actually went through it so I gotta actually punch you in the face to know that for you to know it to hurt if I punch you in the face no no <laughs> damn can you think oh as you can see I like analogies yeah analogies are good I feel like it helps drive points home Absolutely. 
Oh, let's talk more about your music. Yeah. Let's see if you can make a song with any artist oh. in the world right now. Who would it be? I feel like there's always multiple, but one of them would be Lana Del Rey. All right. Because I love her music. I think her songwriting is yeah is fascinating. I think her songwriting is fascinating, and I like the different production she has throughout her albums. I think we can make something moody and fun. No, I like her voice. Yeah. No, no, no. And she has, yeah, she has a very pretty singing voice, and I think we'd have some really pretty harmonies that we could do together. Oh, she's a dope yeah. artist. I haven't listened to any of her music in a minute. If you could work with a California-based artist, who would it be? I think she is California-based. Like, from Cali. She from Cali? Yeah. She is? Yeah. It shows you how much I know about her. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I found out about her when I still was in high school, and I was still in Ohio. Yeah. And just, like, the vibe I got was not, like, big city. It's like, she was, like, in the woods and stuff. And the person who showed me... <laughs> is definitely like wake up look at the sun go in the middle of nature type person so i just assumed she was from like somewhere small yeah i know she's from california and then i think she lived in new york for many years and that's kind of where she became found by the record label and stuff so still new york cool yeah and then i like knowing she's that. back in california because i definitely would have picked her from somewhere like nebraska <laughs> Tennessee, like, just tucked away somewhere random. Yeah. That's funny. But yeah, there's actually so many artists that I think it would be really fun to work with. I'll bet. If you could work with an artist that's dead, who would it be? Oh my gosh, that's... Huh. Like Miller. For mm. me. Okay, I'm kind of like... Maybe Amy Winehouse. That'd be cool. Yeah, but I don't know if we would vibe personally. <laughs> I can see that, too. Like women, I was going to say, think. I feel like you're kind of, you know, not in a bad way, but like, you know, cheery and bubbly. Yeah. I don't know what type of people she liked, but yeah. Maybe, is it your song or her song? Or would you want to make the, like all of I it together? I want to make it together. Yeah, good luck. We could make like a jazzy one. I know she loves music, jazz. It'll be straight. Yeah, yeah maybe. Good music. But either way, <laughs> that'd be fun. No, I, I'm actually. I hope. I forgot. I actually got sad when Amy Winehouse died, and I just yeah. said that because it's like a celebrity death, and I was still pretty young. Yeah. And I wasn't super like tapped to her music. <laughs> Bless you. Thanks. But like, she had at least three songs. That I just knew off the radio. That I was like, mm. so when I saw that, I just remember being on the, looking at the news like. And I have another really, really random um, musician who I don't even know if I'd want to work with them or just watch them work. Chopin, mm -hmm. the pianist, the like really old, like Tchaikovsky type. Is he? Oh, duh, ass dead. Yeah, dead. <laughs> uh, I don't. Like Beethoven, <laughs> but Chopin, Why? because I just think the music is really incredible. And that part is interesting. And I would just love to watch it. I like some of the melodies a lot. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. You want to, like, ask questions? Like, yeah. Questions? That would be cool. Especially... And a Chopin and Samea collab would be crazy. I'm not saying it out loud, so I don't. I know. I wonder... I'm actually getting some ideas. I was literally just... I wonder, like, how they thought. Because I would have a conversation. You feel me? And just see, like what line of thinking you're just normally on like yeah are you always thinking about, about music? music like are you, are you just always thinking hearing randomly? the randomly like you feel me it's like or do you have it into your schedule to do it at a certain <laughs> time of every day <laughs> i don't know have you seen it maybe think of like the eminem like there's a dude who does eminem parodies and he's like eminem they'll just do different situations oh really like one of them is like you can't sleep and then he's in bed just rapping and then this like girlfriend is like shut the fuck up like he lays back down or one is like you're in a job interview and you're eminent and he just starts rapping oh my God. wait that's so funny i have to find that but eminem's actual schedule he doesn't rap outside the studio mm. and he goes to the studio like a nine to five eight hours a day he comes at like i think 10 and he leaves at five Huh. Or three or whatever it is. He sets it up like okay, a nine to so five. He puts literally... in eight hours and he goes home. Uh, like, interesting. That's interesting. 
And there are other people who are like, Drake is like, I live inside the studio. Is like, you know, some of them like, I haven't left the crib in four weeks. You feel me? Is like, I just lock in. It's like yeah. Wayne, he stays in the studio. Yeah. It's like, so it's just different processes for different people, but they're still goats. It's interesting. Totally. What's your process for like writing a song? And then recording a song? Or do you like to write and record in the same go-around? I have different processes. I have different things that work for me depending on the song. Yeah. Like, I have a lot of songs that I've just written on the guitar or piano, like, just as is. And, but then sometimes I make a beat and I just make a song to the beat. Yeah. And... I've noticed that the songs I'll come up with will be way different depending on what instrument I'm doing it on or what beat it is, you know? What's the difference, though? Cool. Mm, it just depends. Like, you know, if you have a rock beat, then you're going to make more of a rock song. No, I'm saying more so instrument. Like, if you're playing the guitar, oh. what is the sound more like? And if you're playing a different instrument, what is your songwriting like? I think the two main instruments I write songs on tend to be the piano and guitar. I've noticed, like, the rhythm tends to be kind of different, like, the time signature. Um, on guitar, I'll do more of a hybrid between 4-4 four, four and 6-8. And I think on the piano, I'll do more so 4-4. Four, four. And piano songs, for some reason, tend to translate better into, like, more so pop melodies for me, whereas guitar, sometimes they need to be their own little... <laughs> not super pop thing just somewhere else whether it's oh, yeah. a little bit more rock whether it's a little bit more a little folk inspired or i wouldn't say i make folk songs but you know no when you had a guitar sometimes like and you just play it acoustically you get that little but it's yeah. not it yeah. Gives a vibe. yeah that acoustic vibe and yeah. sometimes i've tried to like produce songs or produce them with people or I'll turn, like, a guitar song and try to make it completely, like, a song that doesn't even have a guitar in it. And sometimes it work, but other times it'll sound so strange. So empty. Like, the vibe is just yeah. wrong. I mean, I feel like, especially if you started with that and it was, like, I won't say built around it, but built with that yeah. space for it there. Once it's gone, it's just like, it's just like you got to replace this. it with something like on purpose, like as opposed to just build something around it and then take it out. You got to be like, all right, this was giving it that da 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 da, so I'm going to replace it with this instead. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Uh, Sometimes it works if you replace it with something that's super similar. Yeah. It's part of the, just the fun. You feel me? Yeah. It's fun to try Figuring different it out. things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what are you looking forward to the most? And. Uh, Upcoming. Just in general in life or in my music? Music. Okay. Yeah, so I've been working on this song since last year, and it's kind of been my, like, it's been my baby since I've spent so much time on this song. I think more than any other song that I've ever worked on, because before when I've produced my own songs, I only have one that's out that's self-produced right now, like completely self-produced, other than mixing and mastering. I don't count that. Um, but in that song, What If We Flew Away, I didn't play any live instruments on it or record any live instruments. It was just vocals and then software instruments and some samples here and there and all that. But with this song, it's called You, and I tried, I learned how to record so many different instruments, and then with the recording, I also learned how to edit all those instruments, and just figuring all that out and how to play them right so they sounded perfect, and then editing them so the sound was absolutely how I wanted the part, it, yeah, how you wanted the processing, it. all of the intricacies took so much time because it was all just a new territory like i did the bass did you do it all as you were learning it um i'm not like the instrument like not learning to play the instrument oh. did you actually start the editing while you were trying to play it like or did you just record it and then start doing it after you learned how to edit like 
No, I was kind of doing it all like... like all right, let me play this and then let me go learn how I have to edit yeah. to bring out the best quality. Kind of both. Like, I've been producing, so I know how to do some stuff. But then just certain that for every skills... that you were playing. Yeah, it was yeah. just very, like, just a lot. Yeah, so you knew the specific. general, like, idea of what you needed to do for some of them. Yeah. You just didn't know what the specifics or, were like, for like, how you. to do it. Yeah. And, yeah, and I did... I have, like, an acoustic guitar two electric guitars or and then i have um i also recorded live bass guitar and i'm not really a good bass player like i just haven't practiced that much so that i actually was learning the instrument as i was recording it which is kind of funny um and i even did a guitar solo which was a little hard for me because i don't guitar solo i just like play chords and finger pick usually but i like how it sounds and it turned out good so i was like awesome this is fire and and i also recorded flute it's dope. <laughs> yeah so it was just fun and there were so many things and i love the details you know i feel like oftentimes when i'm making music the details matter and that everything when it comes together, it sounds so magical. It's like a symphony. Of... No, yeah. Especially when you hear the small stuff, like mm -hmm. solo something, and you like, say you play it all together, right? And you're like, all right, I'm muted, solo this, and then you just increase the highs a little, but you do it on like three things, and you play it again, you're like, air, like a level to it, like. Yeah, just like the little details. And people don't even notice them sometimes. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. And sometimes it's just, yeah, just adds a little. It just feels right. It just adds a little feeling. Uh, last week, I was like, you know, like I said, I've started mixing over yeah. like eight years. And they got to a point where it's like, I know I don't know everything, but I got comfortable with my, you feel me? Yeah. And I was like, wait. I get like that sometimes. And here, I have so many more plugins than I have at home. Yeah. I was like, bro, let me get on. Spent like three hours. Literally, I didn't turn nothing up more than 3 dB. The whole song just... It's just different, you feel me? It just yeah. sounded more cohesive, more bright, like, more that in and out. Because, like, one thing I did was uh, a frequency exciter. Oh. And then you can choose anywhere from your highs, lows, mids, or, like, low mids. Like, you feel me? You have five different knobs. You can turn off. The specific one. Just the specific one, but you have five knobs. So it goes from like like 120 to like four. And then from five to like eight. You feel me? So it's just like super, super direct. And then cool. you can turn up the DB, how much that frequency is enhanced. So that'd be different from EQ. It's affecting the EQ, but it's not EQing like, it's just an exciter. It's just an exciter. You feel me? So it's just exciting that frequency, making that pop okay. a little bit. That's cool. And so it was like, once I turned it on, and it's only when that frequency hits, you feel me? Wow. And so just like the way it affected the reverb is what I was really hearing because it was ah. in the highs, a little excitement. So it's, and the reverb just felt more full. I, this is how it felt when I was sitting there. I was like, oh, Cool. It's like little, the so, little stuff. Yeah. Sometimes when I discover like a little thing, I'm like, whoa, that makes such a big. Just hear it differently. I think it's, it's more so, so you feel good about yourself. Is why I sound so good. <laughs> you, know, I just learned something. <laughs> I, yeah, it's cool learning things, but sometimes I'm like, oh my god, there's so much to learn. You no, know, and that's why I said I forgot. Like, I don't know it all, bro. Yeah. I got comfortable, and that's I was true. like, you know what? Let me. Is honestly. When it comes to recording or producing, period, it's daunting as fuck. Oh, yeah. The first time I looked at a Pro Tools session, I, I just blinked a couple times and I was like, what? This look crazy. <laughs> I, this is a song? Oh, my <laughs> oh. It, yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh... I think buying a new plugin or a new synth will stimulate my creativity even more. But then I'm like, but I have so many that I haven't like 
even fully used. learned or you fully learned too and learned and used and like so when you learn um i have been stressing myself like i need better plugins bro like i need to buy these like and then i was like wait like you said Do there's it. so many things that are here that i haven't and um i had to actually just look at what somebody else was doing actually that made me realize yeah that I just needed to look at it differently. Absolutely. I think something that's really fun for me is being in the studio when other people are working on something, like their own thing even. I don't care what project it is, but just watching them do their thing. Yeah. I always learn something. Yeah. No matter who it is, no matter what project they're working on, I always learn something. Sometimes I just learn that, all right, I was doing that right. Like, you feel me? Whereas just sometimes when you're, like, learning this, you second guess even once you figured out what it is or were yeah, told like, oh, they was that right? Process. You feel me? It was like, all right, so what I'm doing is right. All right, cool. Or I can use that for that. That's what I've been doing. And I'm, all right, it was yeah. right. It's like, I don't need to go tweak that part. You feel me? That's good. But oh. I'm not at your level. I'm I'm oh. like, oh, the technical stuff. Oh, I don't learned produce, a shortcut. Now. I don't produce my own instruments oh, and right. tracks, though. You feel me? Like, I have an understanding and I know how. Yeah. But it's like the amount of time it took me to do what I was hearing. And to, like, time everything up and make sure I just didn't have the patience. Yeah. I don't have the patience. I feel that. The technological want to and understanding, the patience to make it work and sound good. I want to rap. <laughs> I, I can no, record, bro. I'm and like, I want to sing. Yeah. I want to write. But I Even, also Go ahead. I oftentimes have a vision of what I want a song to sound like. And I'm just like, you know, it'd be easier if I knew how to do it myself, at least a little bit. And that's what knowing how to produce helped me with. Mm -hmm. And knowing, like, I can add an EQ to a f already made sound. You feel me? I can add a yeah. synth to something already happening. Totally. All right, bet. I'm going to just go ahead and drop a high pass filter on this bitch. And make it sound like a whole different beat for 30 seconds. You feel me? And so it's like, it helped. I just didn't want to produce the whole thing. And I'm still like, I'll co-produce. Yeah. Co-producing is fun. We were just like, all right, what are we thinking? Or what are we listening to? Yeah. And now somebody's tracking it. And yeah. they want to. I'm not making you do this. You feel me? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that hi-hat there. Drop it. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Right there. Yep, yep, yep. And then you do something. Totally. And then I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm hearing some. <laughs> yep, yep. Here, let me see this real quick. This one, this one. Okay, yeah. Let's see it's that rhythm. Okay, that okay, one. Okay, that's yep, good. Yep, yep. Let me do that. But that's as far as I go. Mm -hmm. Just because I respect the other person more because they know how to do what I'm saying yeah. already. You feel me? And it's like, and you already had an idea too. It's like, we're making this together so I can rap on it. But this is still like, one somebody was like, bro, you co-produced this. And I was like, I don't even want to call it that, bro. Like, I threw in my two cents. And then I broke, I did the bridge. Like, all right, I did the bridge. Like, you feel me? But I don't know. I just, that's, it makes me feel better to not have to be responsible. That's good. Yeah. So don't say nothing on my level. I'll make your vocals go crazy. You feel Hell me? Yeah, Look, I, I feel you. If you want to master on these things, I got you. <laughs> like, the rock, like, but I, I like to produce, but I'm not a producer. Not at all. Yeah. And just because I don't want to take the title from you, what it actually entitles. Yeah. No, I don't do all that. Yeah. The last beat I played, I guess it's also just the level I want to be at, too. It was one or two of my beats. My cousin was like, I'll make something on it. And I was like, have fun. Like, I'm not. But it's like, I don't want that level of production, bro. I want Grammy level production. And there's yeah. already somebody making that shit. You know what? It's <laughs> true. It's true. That's why I like. Sometimes my projects, especially the self-produced ones, take so long because I want everything to be really right. good. Yeah. And if it doesn't sound really good, I'll be like, no, I have to redo it. Sometimes as an artist, though, that's just your own personal, like, over the over the top critic of yourself. We yeah, always sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm being too nitpicky. I need to, like, yeah. chill. Especially when it comes to the small things. Mm -hmm. As I like, change the EQ, and like, what do you think? And you'd be like, all right, and what do you think about this one? Sometimes the person sitting there is like, I didn't hear a difference. Yeah. And that's when you know, okay, I'm thinking about this too much. Yeah. 
But other times, it's like, all right, I don't know how the fuck you ain't hear that, bro. <laughs> you yeah. just sound like two totally different things. things. Have happened to me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you don't hear it because you're not a musician. And that's when I just realized, like, if I want to make a good song, my idea of a good song for people to listen to and my idea of a good song is two different things. Mm. It's people just want something that sounds decent and keeps, keeps and catches their that's attention. True. It's like, I need it to sound right. I need it to not peak. I need intricate songwriting and an intricate rhyme scheme. If I don't have at least three of these four elements, you're losing me. Like, that's different than just, yeah. yo, this beat is hard. <laughs> and it's sunny today. You feel me? Yeah, I feel you. The music I like to listen to is not... And even the music I like to make is not necessarily the most easy listening music all the time. Yeah. But sometimes it is. No, yeah. But usually not. No, I'm kind of saying what it's like. But me, that's the thing about art. It's art. It's creating. It's expression. It's fun. And it's like. When it's unique. Even as a person, you might consider yourself super, not you, but as a person, you might, I'm super analytical and I like things to be X, Y, and Z and factual. You still like to laugh. Yeah. Expression, you feel me? So art is to create and you're going to express all parts of you if you want to be a full rounded creative. So it's like when I go to make a song, I usually want to say something and I want it to be, you know, like something that can matter after the song, impart a message into people. Yeah. It's like you got two and a half, three minutes and this song is not, you feel me? So it's like. You do the best you can. Yeah. It'll resonate you with fun. whatever it's exactly. meant to do. And you just yeah, have you to have learn fun. how to do that as an artist and like, all right, no, you put your intention into it and you're creating, but sometimes it's just to have fun. Yeah. And it's not going it to be what I think is the best song, but that doesn't take away yeah. from the quality of the, the song. The song that has the most streams on my Spotify is not the song that I would have expected to. No, yeah. It's always something that you don't expect to yeah. like blow up more than the others. And I'm like, weird, but okay no oh, yeah and that's why you just have to be like all right well like i was even second guessing getting that song produced and then i was like okay <laughs> okay what song is it uh it's called da 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 all right yeah how long has it been out it's been out for a few years at this point i think i released it like towards the end of the pandemic all right, like 2019, 2020, well, I guess 2020. It started in 2019. What is it considered the end of the pandemic? Like 2023? 2021. Like, what was the end of it? Like, I don't know. I think it released. When lockdown it, like... ended or like, when Walmart's opened back? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Good point. Is it still going on? Mm-hmm. Is it restarting? You feel me? Are we still in the pandemic? Is there a pandemic quote, unquote? every winter? Like, yo, don't get me started. 99.9% recovery rate. <laughs> That's where they lost me. I'm not going to lie. Once I Googled just like what has been the like, I think it was like, what was the total fatality number of fatalities? And like, I just put that in perspective with the billions of people on earth. Yeah. I was like, all right, bro. Like it's the way we're talking about it. That's scary. I don't know. I think I'd have to do a lot more research. It is the, 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 the... But... When you speak about anything... Yeah. The way you talk about it denotes a certain level of attention... Absolutely. ...and energy. The first words we heard is unknown virus sweeps across and dismantles, takes out. You feel me? The people are like, oh, unknown! It's taking people out! We've never seen! Like, No. Yes, but no. You feel me? So this is the whole energy that was portrayed behind yeah. it. Because like, I was thinking I was about to look at something so crazy. And then I was like, what is the death toll in America? I was like, what? This got to be wrong. And I looked at like the global count. And I was like, that's a lot of motherfuckers. World population. Divided by. Am I heartless or is this stupid? Hmm. I also end up wondering like they say a lot of i don't know it's, it's so controversial no i trust me i hear you but you know i feel like illnesses viruses all this stuff affects people who are have 
immune system issues and are more disabled. And that's a big part of the the numbers the that are reported, 100%. And it, but it does make me question, like, wouldn't other viruses in general take them out too? So out of this one in particular, and that's another question behind it. And people will just like, you even asking questions like that is insensitive to the millions of people who do have these autoimmune, you feel I me? I just want to research it. Trying, you feel me? I'm not coming at them. It's not their fault. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's just a question. And also, like, well, now they have the vaccine, so hopefully, like, people are less affected by it. I think when there's a big virus outbreak, it just takes Time. a hot sec for them to get the vaccines and stuff in order. No, yeah. And it's like with any product that is introduced. If that's you true. wanted to bring something, even anything, to a store and sell it. The product needs to be tested, tried. Then you do even for like drinks and makeups and stuff, they do people trials, testing, animal testing yeah. for years before it's actually put in stores and marketed. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it was sucky. And there shouldn't be any viruses, but I don't think it was as the end of the world as it was talked about yeah. and as we felt like it was. And I don't know. It's so interesting because we, like, people literally were like, oh my God, the world is ending. When are we going to have a normal life again? I mean, I was kind of like, when are we going to have a normal life again? Because everything shut down and... So many things were happening, and now we're just... I'm not gonna lie. I was just like, dang. I'm on the computer. <laughs> I was on the computer for like, like three oh, months. okay, so I'm depressed. And outside, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I was just... Oh my god. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. I was just like... Okay. I didn't know what to do. Oh I was like, I'm not even gonna think about it. I, did, I literally, just, the first thing I did when I found out I couldn't go to work <laughs> was get on the computer and start making music. And I went to bed at like four o'clock in the morning. That's good. And then that's, that was like my whole routine. The whole time I was quarantined from work, I would just wake up at like two o'clock in the day, smoke a blunt, read a book, and then get on the computer and be on the computer until whatever time I passed out that night. Yeah. And I would just do that until I was like, all right, well. I did write a lot of songs. I'll go to Ohio and see my family. <laughs> Bye. That's when I got back on the computer a lot. Um, I feel like we had a long conversation. Go oh, yeah. All right. Take the shot. And wrap your mind. Big shot. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Sake Sundays. Thank you for coming through, sharing about yourself. Have I had this... fun. No, we had a good conversation. Yeah. Oh, we went. All over. All over the place. But all good places. Oh, hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. And have a good one. Catch you next week. Bye.